when it comes to the relationship of the Fergana Valley and the Russians, well, it's always been rather tumultuous. The Russian Empire, before the Bolsheviks had taken over, had come here and taken over the entire place. Then the Soviet Union took control over the Russian governance and of course thus over the Fergana Valley. And it had been divided up among three countries. Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, and Kyrgyzstan. The entire area you're looking at now, well, is the Uzbekistan part. This country has a pretty bad reputation in some areas, specifically along the borders. There has often been violence, because when Stalin divided up the Fergana Valley among the nations, it was very much like, you know, the British with India. They just kind of carved out all the borders. So you might have the Uzbek part, then the Kyrgyzstan part, the Tajikistan part, but people of eth different ethnicities and beliefs which cause violence to happen. Although recently it has been dying down, still this is a very rarely traveled part of Uzbekistan, especially by Americans. So I am gonna take it upon myself to show you this entire valley, starting with Margilan, and we're gonna see what it has to offer. Most people overlook this entire place because they believe there's nothing to do here. They instead take their time to go to Tashkent, Bukhara, Hiva, Samarkand, but they overlook the Fergana Valley. But maybe it's worth a quick look at. Let's see it. Здорово. Салам алейкум. Алейкум салам. А та ака, это что такое? What is? Iran. Iran, Iran. Malaka. Oh, kisle. Yes, like it. Okay, no just da budu. Okay, my brother now is here is gonna treat me to Iran. 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 Okay, we're gonna see how this is. А если не понравится, не обидишься. Okay, let's see how it is, baby. Кисленькая, это как как сметана. Я не уверен, что мне очень сильно нравится. Айран не для меня, но, наверное, это популярный напиток в выборе. Ладно, я допью, я допью айран. Надо с какой скорости пить? Сами. Сами. Надо привыкнуть просто. Надо привыкать. Я сейчас привыкну. Канапля будешь? Что? Канапля будешь? Не понял. Канапля. Канапля? Да. Что такое канапля? Это лимон. Это канапля? Нет, это лимон. А, это лимон. А что канапля? Это О, окей, хорошо. I just agreed to something. I have no idea what I agreed to, but this is my new Uzbek brother. So I have to agree to it. Family uh, doesn't hurt family, right? Always have to have a new drinking bowl for yourself. You can't reuse the same one. Can't mix. Not quite sure what this is. If you know what it is, leave it in the comments. Por favor. Вкус интересный. Это курик. Как бы это что? Курик. Курик. Нет. Аперкулос. Аперкулос. Курик. Окей, он просто дал мне что-то другое. Это очень что? Очень сладкое. Сладкое? А это что такое? Ну попробую. Варенье с лимоном. Варенье с лимоном? Да. Очень вкусно. So this is like uh, like raspberry preserves with lemon. We're gonna see how this bad boy is. О, вкусно. 
вкусно. Delicious, sweet. Like a... О, oh магад, как сок. Yeah. Вообще шикарная вещь, очень вкусно. Домашние, это все здесь находится домашнее. Это все домашнее? Yeah. Вот почему так вкусно. And you can finish it with a spoon, look at that. Okay, they say that Uzbek people are the most guest-friendly, most hospitable people in the world. And... Open budget. I cannot disagree with ah. that. They absolutely are. Is that, hello. Hello, hello. Look how friendly. Everybody here wants to be on video. They love it. So many spices. Salam alaikum. There's so many spices. Visas everywhere. Marinated meat anywhere we go. Now, virtually every man in Uzbekistan, if they're 30 or above, they've been married, they've been had a child. That's all there is to it. Now, in here, in this area, given that it's more conservative, more religious, more traditional, it's even earlier. You meet a guy who's 25, he's married, he's got at least one kid, probably has another kid on the way. And if the man is approaching that age and is not married, well then it's just gonna be arranged for him by his parents. The son has no say in that. It is what it is, that's it. And with girls, it's even younger. Now, it's September. It's actually still blistering hot. And yet, you will not find not even a single person wearing shorts. Not one. Everyone is in pants. Got a white shirt on to reflect all the light. That's a physics lesson for you. I hope you paid attention in school. Light is white, ignore the fact that it looks yellow, it's white, it hits you. You were white, you reflect it, okay? You were black, you absorb it. Physics 101. Now in front, right there, is one of a few attractions here in Margilan. The Honohan Mosque. It's got the traditional pillars. It's got the blue dome. Not too bad looking. Why don't we get a little closer. Now it's possible that we're gonna have a hard time getting into the mosque because they're doing construction. But if that's the case, just look at that. Now the Fergana Valley is the powerhouse of Uzbekistan. Most of the Chevy cars that are in here get produced here. It's also really famous for the agriculture. Almost all of the country's agriculture gets produced in various parts of this valley. And there's one other thing that they're really known for, which is silk. Silk, 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 silk. Uzbekistan is on the Silk Road, named so, or on the former Silk Road, named so given that China, hundreds of years ago had produced almost all of the world's silk and it had been transported across Central Asia from through various countries including Uzbekistan. We're right on the Silk Road. Ha ha ha! Ha ha! We found the secret entrance. Now if you're ever walking by people and you're in doubt, if you make eye contact you don't know what to say or do, Simply say, Salam Alaikum. And if they say Salam Alaikum to you, you say, Walaikum Salam. Look at that. Now the incredible thing about this mosque is that it is literally 15 degrees cooler inside of these walls. I would say that Uzbekistan has some of the most underrated mosques on planet Earth. There, we got our full-blown new view from the inside. This actual mosque is over 500 years old and then the city of Maragilan had is over 2000 years old 
back during those days of the Silk Road, they viewed it as like the capital of Uzbekistan. That's how people would refer to it, given its importance in terms of that silk trade. Something very interesting that's been happening there during this entire trip. Everybody I meet asks to exchange numbers and then they'll say we'll call each other to sort something out. I'll show you something or other. And I'm not sure yet if this is a polite formality that they do here or if it's a legit thing. Let me know if you are aware of how this thing works here. As you get a little away from the center of Margilan, it gets way quieter. Cars are still more or less driving through the streets, but it's significantly quieter than elsewhere. But here is what we are here to see. The Said Ahmad Hoja Madrasa. This is the Margilan Crafts Development Center. Remember how I said the thing about the silk? Well, apparently there's silk stuff happening here. So we're gonna check it out. Here they make the silk. Wow. It's basically silk string over here that gets made. Very fine, look how fine it is. Extremely fine, like hairline fine. I still have this still at the coming hinter. Oh, to be designed it type deal it. Okay, all these stones are to imprint the designs onto the silk. So you take that liquid basically, put it on and then you use it to stamp. All by hand. Yeah. Oh, Kakualadina. <laughs> All the carpets. This is what Uzbekistan is most famous for, kids. You come here, everything, everything is cheap. Except for two things, really. The knives from that come from Fergana and the rugs. The rugs are what can cost you up to tens of thousands of dollars because they take so long to make. They take half a year to make some of them. Ikwachin dolga. Шить, да, как шесть месяцев, семь, весит, семь месяцев. А за сколько продаются? Один квадрат сантиметр, триста тысяч кило. Триста тысяч? Вау. Окей. Ну да, so, expensive folks. And you can get ones that you hang on the wall, other ones that you put on the floor. This is a simple one. Oh, да. Ну все, еще чувствуется такой очень мягенький, очень мягенький. Silk carpets are too good. You lay on one, no burn, no nothing. Can come out looking like this, super soft. Check this out, world famous Uzbek instrument. Wow. Straight up, try not to fall with it. As a toja, another hand one. This fella's trying to sell me on some of this silk and wool and stuff. I don't know if he'll succeed though. But look, pretty nice. Got these bags, pillowcases, look at it. Feels nice, soft. I think that the people who own this place probably are the ones who are able to fund the various construction projects 
throughout Uzbekistan. We've got some dresses, super light, very light. Look at that. Very pretty, very light. Okay, well, we didn't get quite the full tour because we know we just kind of barged right in, you and I, but we did get a nice little mini tour and we didn't pay anything. See, this is how it's done. Freeloading in Uzbekistan. Now, Margulan used to have way more historic buildings, but during the Soviet era, a lot of them had been essentially destroyed as the people around here were oppressed by the government of the USSR. So there really isn't that much left. However, as you see, at least the silk trade, which has endured through millennia at this point, continues to endure here. So you see these vans. If you want to save a bit of money, you can go into any of these vans essentially and different ones go to different locations. So if you don't want to spend the 30 or 40 dollars or whatever to go into a different part of the valley, you simply go into one of these you inquire as to how much they charge, it'll be a fraction of the cost, and you go. Like for example, that one's going to Andijon, this one's Kukon, etc, etc, etc. The guy over there told me that to go to, um, what was it, Kashkin or something? Another place would have been, for example, 15,000, which is like 12 bucks or something versus taking just a private cab, which would have been closer to 30. Now, granted, if you're an American, you can probably just go ahead and pay that 30. Uh, but if you're not, or if you are really traveling on a budget, these are not gonna be a bad deal for you, as long as they have air conditioning. If they don't, well, your life is going to be tougher. Well, kids, we're about to smoke something. And what are we going to do? Hey, it's not going to be a cigarette. It's not going to be a cigarette? Okay. 